Okay, so first things first, we are here. If this is not the talk that you wanted, now it's the moment to escape. This is a new reason to escape, right? <laughs> okay, that's me. And uh, I work in a company called Automatic. This is important to give you a little bit of context about the experiment that we made, we implemented, and that was pretty a success. So I wanted to share it with you this morning. Automatic is a company that is behind several of the finest applications or programs or developments in the internet. For instance, SimpleNote. Anyone is using SimpleNote right now? No? <laughs> uh, Tumblr and WordPress.com. The particularity of our company, among some others, is that we all work remote or, as we like to say, distributed. Distributed means not that we can select one day to work from home, but that you can work from wherever. For instance, my team is called Team Neptune, and uh, we are very happy because we are right now, all of us, in the same, more or less, time zone. But not together, because there are two people working from South Africa and uh, another woman working from Poland, for instance. Side note. The woman working from Poland is from Philippines. The two people in South Africa just one month ago were in the US and in um, Scotland. So you can really work from wherever. I work from the underpopulated Spain. So this... <laughs> uh, yes, if, if you want to take a look one of these days, we have a website where you can see some uh, places from where we work. The other key point is that it is the house of a very special kind of support um, assistants, let's say, or representatives that we call happiness engineers. I'm a happiness engineers team lead, and the, the particularities of this support representative is are that they need not just to consult a handbook with all the answers to the given questions, but they need to give support, for sure, but they create documentation. They are, let's say, WordPress hackers, because we can't do virtually anything that you can think of in some minutes. Oh, no. This including Uh, here it is. Okay. So, yeah, I have three little kids. So this moment is magic to me because there are people listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So they can prepare a website of any kind. For instance, a, um, I suppose that the most complicated website could be um, e-commerce sites where you can several payment gateways you need to um, add several plugins, each one from a different third party, and make them work together. Uh, they are also experts in testing. They are the testers in my company. They are very good at reporting and even sometimes fixing uh, errors in GitHub. They are quite good coders, especially in, um, well, CSS, PHP, JavaScript. They are wrangling. A, well, in some cases, even they do something similar to data um, science and so all kinds and learning. Because in my company, two of two out of your eight hours a day are used. You are forced to use these two hours to learn. So this is something pretty uh, important. And we have not a learning department. These happiness engineers are responsible for creating these learning uh, processes or workflows or whatever. And they are very good at that. We can say that here, the generation of the 
usage of the knowledge that we are generating is pretty overlapped. So we have no handbook. And the kind of answers that we need to give to our customers are pretty creative. Those are some examples from yesterday. Help with CSS code. So for instance, uh, I would like the, um, a menu item in my, by the way, in WordPress.com we basically make websites. Okay, just in case. So um, change the color the background of a menu item on hover. It's SEO questions, so this can be virtually everything. There are a lot of people asking us how to prepare a strategy to get more traffic to the website. That means SEO or um, also some kind of social networks strategy. As you can imagine, you cannot answer always the same thing. Because people are very good when they are demanding a personalized support in um, finding that you are repeating the same thing over and over. It's creative. It depends on the website. Uh, plan an online shop, for instance. Someone asking us how to plan, how to um, approach an online shop to sell. This is a example that we have just two days ago. An online shop to sell wine, but in box and boxes of three, six, and twelve bottles that you can fill with any kind of wine with two payment, two conventional payment gateways, so PayPal and credit card, but also a local payment gateway for. Chile, in, the, in, in this case, and in the same page, they wanted to add uh, a feature to be able to visit the vineyard, so you can book visits uh, of up to 20 persons, and uh, it should be allowed to book just 12 seats, let's say, and allow for the following visitor to book the other eight seats. It's pretty complex, right? These happiness engineers are helping people with this. Of course, there are more people asking for a cancellation. Those are pretty simple because our cancellation policy is, yeah, if you want to cancel, we refund it. And uh, in this context, what we did is a peer reviews workflow that worked. As I said, this is very particular case for happiness engineers, but I can tell you that this was a success and it has been cloned in several teams all along the company. So I think that this could be also used, uh, at least the principles, in development uh, periods. Let me tell you why I think so. Well, first thing, um, if you recall the title of this talk, it contains the word learning. And think about that. When you think about peer reviews, you're thinking about someone assessing what you have done, trying to put a grade on you. They are judging you. They are trying to find tricky things to say that you are not doing a great job, right? The subject of the peer review is the one that is trying to find tricky things, the one in the quality department, maybe a peer, okay. What if we change the focus, the subject, and it's about people willing to learn how to work better? Instead of judging, instead of putting a grade on a interaction in this case, we call interaction uh, to our conversations with customers that could be by chat, um, we call tickets to a conversation made up with um, emails or even video calls, one-on-one -on -one video calls, sharing the screen, okay? So, we can change the focus and create a different process, and this is what we tried. So, first thing, the goal is generate learnings, not to put a grade. We don't put grades, we don't uh, create qualifications, stats, it doesn't matter. The second goal is to generate impact. Because sometimes, from one of these interactions, we can learn as a company. We can create new products. We can change the way in which we have our products, right? 
So the process starts with its happiness engineer selecting the interaction that they want, they want to submit to be reviewed by others. And believe it or not, we tend not to submit those you know, cool interactions, but those that, are, that we call red bots. Red bots are essentially bad feedbacks from our customers. So with this interaction, we made someone to be unhappy. And this is what is important if you want to learn you should focus on these interactions, not in the, you know, those that you know that you are. <laughs> but in fact, you should also share good interactions because there are some learnings for the others, some lessons learned that you can value, you can acknowledge the value and you can you know, package in a way that they could be reduced, right? What if you create a good structure for this um, shop? That, that I mentioned before. Well, we can reuse that, right? We should, in fact. If the customer is so happy that they took the time to give us a nice feedback. Um, apart from that, what we create is a horizontal discussion and an open conversation. You're going to see what I mean by that. Uh, I wanted to share an example with you, but all the examples have, let's say, personal details and uh, you know I'm I'm very I'm sure that you will understand that we cannot share this kind of personal details but I've used the same process for us uh, this has been used just a couple of times but what we essentially do is to share with the others a one of our websites to ask for feedback it's like peer feedback about a personal website, right? And this is the aspect that it has. We used P2 posts that are posts with a special theme or aspect or layout that is called P2 that makes it easy to have a horizontal discussion. And uh, this is the explanation. This is what, what, what she is asking us to review. And as you can see, there is a pretty dense, interesting conversation where, by the way, we found a bag. This is about the podcasting website and we found, we found a bag having to do with iBox that we are going to fix. So this is the kind of um, reviews that we are creating. Okay. I started saying that this was a success, but well, we, we need to know why. Well, first, we have several indicators of this success. First, unsolicited uh, feedbacks from people taking part in the process. So not from someone else, not from someone from the quality department looking at figures, from people that are affected by the process. And when I say affected, I, I understand that peer reviews are like at least controversial, not the thing that you usually want to, to share. And think about that. If you are a coder, a developer, uh, you could dislike it. But just in mind, if you are sharing your conversations, your in some way private conversations with people, it's even trickier. We generate a lot of impacts, um, posts, follow-up tickets. That means that sometimes when we find that we, we could have done better with a customer, we recontact them to tell them, yeah, I think that I could have done better. Uh, let me suggest you another alternative way to fix or to solve your problem, another approach. Uh, new WP ideas is the way in which we call our, uh, you know, customers feature requests, if you want. It's quite valuable. Uh, GitHub issues, we use that as an example for other people. 
the results, numeric results, uh, that we review more or less, yeah, among 20 and 30 um, interactions a month, the big interactions, and those are the number of reviews. We don't force people to review interactions, so this is marvelous. We evolved from 3.7 interactions, sorry, reviews uh, by interaction to six or more than six as uh, on average, right? Apart from that, and this is amazing. Uh, this is from a anonymous poll and people in the team said, uh, you know, 9.8 out of 10, that this peer feedback process contributes to the good environment, to the good team spirit. This is like unbelievable, right? And uh, they wanted to go on when we uh, made this poll. This is something that touched your heart. So what we tried is to understand why this was so impactful in a good way, why they love it. Because again, peer reviews is not something that you usually love, right? Who, uh, can you raise your hand if you like peer reviews? Oh, sorry about that. Is there anyone who don't like peer reviews? Alvaro, please help me. Ah. <laughs> okay, so uh, going back. Um, we used individual brainstorming sessions to ask each participant about the three, four, two key factors for the success of this uh, experiment at the very beginning, now process. And uh, we used these phrases to create a second poll where each one could uh, express their agreement with each one of these statements. And uh, out of that, we found that there are five key factors that could be interesting to share because you can uh, apply, you can implement any peer reviews process having into account these factors. And uh, we tend to think that you have the success assured. First one is that we made it open. That essentially means that anyone can participate in the process. Those are two of the questions that are more you know, meaningful in this case. Anyone can participate, and that means that if we were, for instance, taking a look at, at the interaction having to do with um, iBox, we ping, we ask a iBox or podcast expert to join the conversation, to chime in, to help us. But by default, it, it's open. We are not using, we try to use some tools like, for instance, Qualitista or now Klaus or, yeah. But this is closed. You can mention someone, but you cannot really take a look at the reviews that other people are doing. The key point here is that you can take a look and you can even learn without really taking part, without writing a note, because you say, yeah, this is cool. I, I learned something. I don't really need to to take part. Okay, first thing, it is open. Second thing is based in this layout. In our case, as we work with um, blogs, it made, it made sense to um, make this process blog-based, right? But my recommendation would be not to use new tools. You know, they are very complex tools, not just for peer reviews, for everything, for almost everything. They even fix problems that you don't have. Sometimes you don't really need to do that. The simplest, the better. Horizontality, and this is my favorite one. In some cases, not everywhere, but in some cases, you can really feel the lack of horizontality in peer reviews. I would say in almost everything. 
But if you are asking people to take part, to participate in anything, the horizontality is the most powerful attractor for participation. And this is something that we need to take into account because we are essentially asking people, in this case, to take part without being forced. They don't really need to take part. They take part because they understand that they are learning. And this is the key for the success. They are not... Well, we have some goals linked to um, these peer reviews, to be honest, but this is not the key point to take part. They feel that this is a horizontal process and uh, when I take part, as I am the team lead, I don't intend to be more expert or intelligent. No one tries to do that. Even we can learn from the newer members. This is something that you need to understand. If you are asking to learn new things, you are probably going to learn more new things from people with fresher ideas. So the newer team members, the people with a shorter tenure are key. Okay. Also, that is learning oriented. We, we also mentioned that, right? We have mentioned that several times. I think that these together with horizontality is the two main, main important things. We, they are not doing this because they are being followed or because we have an interact and um, indicator. It's because they understand that they are learning. And last, they do think that this contributes to build the team, to create a, a successful team environment, a good place where to feel happy working. And this is very important as we, as I told you, work remotely. When I say remotely, I don't, I don't mean that we have the freedom to work one or two days from home. It's that we cannot work from a office because we don't have office. So we need to take care of building the team. And this was a powerful tool to build the team. And just to end, with the presentation, as I said that this was a horizontal process, I would love to give the word to my mates. This is what, we, what they said about the process. And there are some very interesting facts that you could get firsthand. And that's all. By the way, if you want to take a look at the details of this, you know, the, I didn't want you to learn or to check all the details, all the results from this poll, etc. But the, these results are published in this remotefraud.com, and uh, I'm going to 
uh, share with you in a couple of days a new post with um, extra information if you want to follow that. Any question? Okay, uh, thank you for the great presentation. Um, I lead a fully distributed team too, and I know the, your challenge. Uh, I, I wanted to question about um, is, how is, are these um, peer reviews attached to promotion and salary and that kind of thing? How, could, how do you lead with that, um, you know, the thing that people try to, um, to hack the system just to... Okay, so, uh, would you prefer to um, ask in Spanish? It's, I speak Spanish quite well. <laughs> okay, so, do you want me to... Uh, who cannot understand Spanish? Yo, okay, so. First, this is not linked with promotion, not with salary the motivation to take part in these peer reviews is absolutely, um, let's say, intrinsic. People taking part here want to learn. I mean, it's in, indirectly attached to promotion, etc., etc., because if you learn uh, in our company, learning is well, well perceived, let's say, but there is no hacking because it, it doesn't pay off. Have an answer? How do, how do you do the other part? The? How do you do the, the promotion? Another, another parallel system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we can take a coffee after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, this is just to, to, to learn. And this is important because there are, we have no grades. There are no stats. Well, there are stats about the amount of interactions that we are reviewing, how often we do that, but not great on people. Thank you for the nice talk. Um, I wanted to ask um, if um, in the selection process of the team, do you take into account uh, some tests to, to evaluate if people is uh, like peer review and, uh, and because I was thinking maybe this is biased, uh, this data, because you are selecting people that like this peer review process. Thanks. So you are essentially saying that I'm a little bit of a cheater <laughs> to get that. Well, no. Uh, <laughs> no one joined the process after this, uh, sorry, no one joined the team after this process uh, started. So they weren't selected, having into account peer reviews. It's true that our company culture promotes these kind of things. And there is something that also helps, not just to this, but in general, is the fact that in order to join our company, you need to go through a four to six weeks process where you are essentially doing the same that you will finally do to see if you like the company culture and also if um, well your future teammates can give feedback about you so uh, of course we 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 pay people during these six weeks <laughs> it's, it's it's not yeah no so this could help but no we are not selecting people and we started this in our team team neptune right but this has been cloned reduced let's say in some of the teams as they checked that it, it was useful. <laughs> Hi, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I would like to ask you if once you have the, the culture, uh, your team has uh, welcomed your uh, your strategy about, uh, okay, we say we learn from from the peer reviews. Okay, we have all of that. What things uh, uh, do you recommend uh, to start doing it? How do you engage people to start doing that? Because in some cases, for example, uh, in our case, in our company, uh, we have uh, 
some uh, system like that, we also love learn and all that kind of stuff. But sometimes it's very hard to, to start with the previews. Uh, sometimes more requests are uh, starting to accumulate on the on the on there. So what uh, what things have uh, worked uh, from your experience to to this not happen? In general, I think that when you are asking people to try something new, to engage in something that is not directly linked with the salary. You are asking for participation. The most powerful thing that you can do is to generate a horizontal environment. That means, for instance, here that I started asking four of, four of the team members to create a prototype of this process, they created it. So these, at least these four people in the sub team were engaged. Then, I had another idea. I was, let me be honest, I was convinced that this was going to fail. Mainly because you don't, I, I think that if you serve red bots, negative feedbacks, people could be tempted to say, oh, you don't deserve this. You know, this, and you, this kind of unuseful feedback to say that you are helping the other people, but but this is extremely unuseful. And I was convinced that this was not going to work. But I, I, you know, I practiced the mindfulness and I launched it. Even if I was convinced, I was truly thinking that in one, two months, we were going to adopt my alternative. I was wrong. What I mean here is that if you really say that you are going to be horizontal, everything could be, become a powerful metaphor. If everyone knows that you want another perspective and you accept the other perspective as a team lead, people, uh, this is didactical, people learn from that. People understand that the, this is really horizontal and they are attracted to this process or any other process in general. I would say that horizontality is the key for any kind of participation, not just in the internet, but especially in the internet. And when you have not your boss or your team lead, you know, in front of you every single day. This yeah, it's not, in my only, not only about to tell, okay, this is going to work because we are, uh, have, we are going to learn or something, because you said it's more about, okay, uh, we have, I have this idea, I would like to, to share it with you, okay, and let's participate in the process of create uh, how we are going to make the peer reviews or... We created it all together, we discussed a lot, and the, the process has evolved from the beginning. There are some things that changed. But these five points that I shared with you are the, 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 the things that have remained unchanged. And I think, I, I truly think that they're very important. To be honest, not just for that. So horizontality is key. Uh, openness is very important yeah. because when you have a team and you have been working for, with your team for two years, if you don't open any process, you are not going to learn anything new. All the brilliant ideas are in the boundaries. And uh, if, you, if your team knows you, they're going to say exactly what you expect from them each time, you know, as, uh, what, you, what they expect from the team lead. Uh, using the easiest possible tools. Yeah, this is, well, at, at least my, my point of view, uh, important note. <laughs> this doesn't mean free tools. Mm. We in Spain are very usually tempted to use the free version for a brilliant tool that is doing everything for me, but it, it costs two euros a month. They are unacceptable. No, it's different. Okay, sorry. If I, I, thank you. Have I yes. answered? Yes, you have okay. answered. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I just wanted to ask about the happiness engineer. Is that
can you reiterate like super briefly on on their kind of role and whether it is a rotating role or whether you actually hire a person who is doing that full time? Okay. Yeah, sorry. We 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 all do full time this. No, I mean like is happiness engineer a dedicated role or it's like Yeah, it is a dedicated role. Uh, I don't <laughs> Happiness engineer is some kind of a person in the team that actually monitors uh, like the interactions and whatnot. Something like I don't know, maybe like a scrum. Uh, how no, scrum yeah. master manages the sprint it's flow. Gotcha. Okay, be, be, before the coffee. <laughs> uh, what are the processes for solving, uh, you know, controversials? about uh, comments, about peer reviews? How do you solve that scenarios where different people in the team uh, have different opinions about one feature? This is a marvelous question. This is a marvelous question. When you have several approaches, several points of view, why do you need to choose the best one? Uh, you need to choose one. <laughs> or to combine, but in fact, this is not always true. I would say that this is almost never true. If you have several approaches to fix or to solve the problem, every one of these approaches are told that because you can learn from these approaches for a different case, just the fact that you have taken a look at the way in which several team members think is marvelous to approach the following case. You know what I mean? So we usually don't care if there are different approaches. We try to combine approaches, we uh, criticize approaches, we try to find weak points, weaknesses, we try to find why each approach is great or not, and we put that in common so that each one can choose. There is, we have tricky problems, there is never a 
best option. The best learning is that there are different alternatives that you can create creatively and be creative to use the benchmark for your case. This is our approach, right? I believe firmly that this is the right one, at least in this case. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much. And, uh...